time now. We're, we got our good friend Marcus Michaels who's on the line. Marcus, uh, good Saturday morning to you, and, and and I guess you know, hey, happy Valentine's weekend. Hey, Paul, how are you? We're we're doing fantastic, uh, uh, Marcus. We're excited because uh, Tuesday's going to be a very special night over at the uh, Ice Flyers game. It's it's not you know every day that you bring in the the goaltender of the Miracle on Ice USA team and Jim Craig. Uh, and, and it's going to happen uh, on Tuesday. He'll be here. We had the opportunity to talk to him this week, and uh, we're going to play the interview a little bit uh, later on the show. And, and thank you to Dr. Stuart Harlan for, for bringing him, him in. But anyways, uh, Marcus, do, do you remember, you know, back in 1980 when that all happened? Did you, and I know it wasn't shown live at the time with the Soviet Union game, but they taped delayed it on that. Uh, and I, I remember it was on a Friday night. Do, do, do you remember seeing it? Oh, oh yeah. I, I remember I was a big hockey fan at the time. It was a big moment. I was an undergraduate school. I was in college. I was in my second year. I watched the game on tape delay. I remember sweating out the, the, the final 10 minutes of that game like, like I hadn't sweated in an amateur sporting event ever. It was it was it was impactful at the time for me, and, and I tell you, a lot of people don't remember how nerve wracking the final game was against Finland. You know, you're thinking you've pulled off this miracle, but the miracle is going to be a footnote somewhere if you don't win this gold medal. And they fell behind against Finland. It was just, I'll tell you, it was something. It was something truly special. It marked a lot of American sports fans, and even you know, non hockey fans, just people that were sports fans in general. It, it has marked us historically. Well, you, you you said you were going to undergrad school. Yeah, I was in I was at Furman University in South Carolina. I, I was an athlete. I played a little bit of high school hockey. Um, I was I was I was playing baseball at the time uh, in undergraduate school, and and you know just uh, just an athlete. You know, I just loved sports. And if, if you were from that generation, you were used to the United States getting handled by professional sports teams and, and countries in, in the Olympics. I mean, you know, the Cuban boxing team would work us over pretty good because they were professional fighters and you know you'd have the east german you know swim team which would dominate because they were professional swimmers and you know you know you just you were used to as an american sports fan the olympics being terribly frustrating i mean it was not even going to be a contest really between the soviet union and the united states in hockey I, there's there's no way anybody could have predicted that that would have even been a close game so for it to be a game that that, that the united states would win i mean I, I, if anybody tells you they thought the united United States had a shot at that game. They're not being truthful. It was just a question of how badly would they get beaten. So for them to win that game is is an upset uh, of a of a dimension you just almost can't describe in sports. Well, uh, Marcus, uh, just just your reaction here on on what it meant to hockey because even till this day, I mean, what it did for Al Michaels, and I remember him at the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I I remember him at the time. I think he, he was saying he never did hockey before, and he was paired up with Ken Dryden uh, doing the game. Uh, yes. you know, it's, it's just a true legend, Ken Dryden. And, and I remember the, 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 the telecast because I, I, was, I, I was watching them from, from the first game on, and, and then I got intrigued by it to see just exactly how this team can, can do. And I remember it, you know, listening on updates on a local radio talk show in Pittsburgh – about it that uh, they ended up winning, so I knew going into the tape delay that they that they won, but I wanted yeah. to I wanted to see how it was all done, and it was amazing. And 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 do you believe in miracles? Yes, I mean that's <laughs> that's one of the still of the, the the best all time sayings. Well, as a broadcaster, I mean you can see the beauty of that, and Al Michaels deserves great credit for that. But you know you wonder as you go back and you look at that game. I mean. The, the world's leading goaltender at that time, Tretiak, was just uh, he, he was just dominant and was pulled at the end of the first period for basically just making an emotional lapse and, and, and lackadaisically playing that, that puck late at the end of the first period would tie the game. So he made kind of a, 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 a you know concentration error. So they yanked him, which was just ridiculous. I mean, it was the, it was the easily the world's greatest goalie. It was a, it was an arrogant move. Who later uh, the 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 coach of the Soviet Union, Tikhonov, said that it was under pressure from Soviet advisors and administrators that he pulled Trediak. Well, you know, Ken Dryden in the box was bewildered when they came out of the second period with no Trediak, and, and he handled it very delicately because he wondered, you know, about the man's safety. 
So, the, so the, there's a lot of sort of subplots developing. But one of the things that I think that that this game did, which which really hasn't been written a, a lot about, is I think it legitimized and validated college hockey. You know, a lot of these players were coming out of the University of Minnesota and you know Boston and New England. There was some good stories about some of the rivalries, but a lot of these kids were kids that didn't that didn't go to the juniors programs in Canada and where where, where real professional hockey players came from at that time. I, I think it validated that some of these athletes that were playing college hockey in North America were legitimate professional you know contenders. A lot of them went on to have good you know maybe not great but good NHL careers, and I think it opened some eyes to, to the level of talent that was being, you know, harvested from, you know, primarily American college hockey. Yeah, um, next weekend's going to be the 35-year anniversary weekend, and, and next weekend is actually Hockey Day uh, in America, and obviously it's it's with the 35-year anniversary of uh, the USA winning the, the gold medal day, and, uh, and, you know, having Jim Craig here on Tuesday night, it's going to be fabulous, but I guess you could say one one player that did well for himself, if you remember, was a defenseman named Kenny Morrow uh, on that team because uh, he ends up winning the gold medal, and then he goes to the Islanders, uh, straight to the Islanders. And even in that, you know, he wins the gold medal, and then they went a Stanley Cup, and he wins a couple of Stanley Cups for the Islanders. Yeah, I mean, there were some talent. I mean, you know, Neil Broton, Dave Christian, Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson had a productive NHL career. Mike Ramsey had a productive NHL career. I mean, the, the, you're right. The thing that was weird was Ken Morrow just went right up and, you know, took, took a sweater and dressed. And that was, that's very unusual for college hockey players at that time. I think a lot of, you know, a lot of that credit goes to Herb Brooks, who, you know, put a, put a premium on speed and, and put a premium on, you know, some somewhat complex offensive systems at that time. I mean, he 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 developed some of these players. I mean, guys like Mike Ruzioni never really panned out in the NHL, and there were some other guys that. Yeah, I mean, Jim Craig is a, is an example of you know maybe a guy that you might have thought would have done more in the NHL, but but there were some players that that, that had good, strong NHL careers, and and if they hadn't won that game, if they hadn't really you know been thrust into the spotlight, I don't think those guys would have seen a sniff of NHL hockey. I mean, I, I don't think coming out of you know a, a, a New England college or University of Minnesota, you you weren't really considered an NHL quality prospect back in that day. Well, Mike Urizioni probably made the best call, and it was a tough call for him to do, is that he decided after the Olympics that that was it for him. And he wasn't going to go and, and want to be remembered as far as a player that couldn't make it in the National Hockey League or tried or maybe had a cup of coffee or whatever. He just wanted to be remembered as the captain of the uh, – Olympic team that won the gold medal, and boy, boy, it panned out for him, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's uh, there's a lot to be said about the maturity of a guy like Aruzioni and recognizing at that point in, in history the impact that that had, you know, on history. And and I, and I don't know, I mean, I can tell you as kind of a second or third tier wannabe athlete, it's pretty hard not to not to think that you can compete against the players and the talent that's out there. And if you're Mike Aruzioni. The, the maturity. I mean, he was an older guy and, 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 a, and, a, and a leader and, and a great hockey player, but he recognized that he wasn't really an NHL premier level talent. And for him to be able to to honestly assess that at that time is really quite amazing. And I, I, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for not not only recognizing that and not distracting from from his own career, but the way that he kept everybody together. I mean, he 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 was a personality that was able to. To, to, to counter Brooks, who was a very divisive kind of coach, a, a guy that really liked to get under the skin and mess with the heads of his players. Aruzioni was the kind of guy that everybody trusted and, and knew that, 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 that he had their back. And so that, that guy really deserves all the credit of, of that medal. Uh, did you happen to see the movie Miracle? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's standard fare around here. Uh, but, uh, and, and I'll tell you, it, 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 it really paints a pretty nice picture of everything. Yeah, you know, you never know how honest you know those things are because you're not the guys in the you know you're not in the locker room you're not you're not around there. I thought Mike Ruzioni said it best recently. He said if, if if Herb came to his house today, it would still be an uncomfortable meeting. <laughs> you know, it's like Ruzioni said. I mean, years later, I mean, still with all the celebration and all the 
you know, glory of it, there's still kind of an uncomfortable relationship there. And, 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 it, and it's an interesting statement of just how difficult of a coach you know, Brooks was and, and the way that he motivated his players. Yeah, it was a shame that Herb Brooks never got to saw the movie uh, because he passed away in a in a car accident right. just before it. But he he was made for Olympic hockey, wasn't he? Because he won the gold medal. You know, he took a bunch of college kids doing what he did uh, against the Soviet Union because, you know, a week ago, as you mentioned, Marcus, they got crushed. Yeah. Like something like, I don't know what the score was, 10-1, 11-1, something like that. Yeah, it was. Just just the week before. But here you go. You get the professionals in the National Hockey League. United States looking for somebody. Who can do it? Put them over the top. They they get her Brooks. Almost does it in Salt Lake City against team. Oh, they brought him to the gold medal game. And I thought at that particular time, I was confident that USA was going to do it. But Canada ended up being – a little bit too much with the professionals playing. Well, well, Herb Brooks, I mean, I don't know that he gets enough credit for recognizing the way the international game was played at that time. You know, there was a, a tremendous difference between North American hockey and, and European hockey then. And the NHL has really moved more towards the international game over the last couple of decades. But, but at that time... Trying to build an international team, you know, based upon speed, he was rolling four lines. He was run, he was running four lines within the last five to six minutes of the game. That was unheard of back then. The Soviets were running two and maybe three at times. Their fourth line never even laced it up. I mean, they never even broke a sweat. It was it, and and Herb Brooks created that team. He 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 selected players, moved forwards to the to the blue line because of speed. Did things which are now recognized as pretty commonplace, but did it at a time when nobody in North America was trying to emulate European hockey. They were trying to muscle up, get into the corners, work the puck on the walls, and punch punish international players, and the international game was open ice and speed. Herb Brooks knew that, went right at it, and beat him at their own game. Well, Marcus, uh, we, we asked Jim Craig if we were ever see a miracle on ice uh, uh, again, and he said, well, there'll be somebody somewhere, if it's on ice, on the field, you know, at, the, at a ballpark or whatever, something, somebody competing will, will come up, you know, and do something like that. But I, it's hard to believe because – you know, till this very day, that's the, still the greatest sports moment in, in U.S. history. I don't know if we'll ever see a bunch of college kids, especially the way that the Olympics are these days, but the magnitude of it all and what it meant for, for this country. You know, a game of hockey, which at that particular time, Marcus, as you know, probably number five or six on the totem pole, <laughs> you know, as far as popularity in the United States. But with the U.S. winning the gold medal, the game is just unbelievable because you have teams of all places just like in Pensacola now. Yeah, it's hard to imagine a, a setup quite like this. I mean, there's going to be underdogs that are going to win sporting events, but in terms of nation-state athletics, I mean, you know, you're talking about the Cold War, you're talking about politics and nation-state representatives, and, and I, you know, the, just the way that it sets up and, and, and just the way that the underdog was created, uh, it's not likely I'm going to see that in my lifetime again. Marcus, hey, great stuff. Really appreciate it. You have yourself uh, a great weekend, all right?